Welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on how to automate Grasshopper with Python. In part 1 we set up a pretty straightforward Grasshopper script uh, where we made a cube shape with a simple taper and twist variable inputs and in this part of the tutorial we're going to set up the Python script. Before we jump into our Python editor, just going to go into this document and copy and paste our Python component that I taught you how to set that one up in a previous tutorial. If you haven't had a chance to check that one out, I'll put it in the description of this tutorial. Now that we've got that in that, we're ready to set up our Python script. So if we jump into our Rhino window under tools, Python script, hit edit will give us our Python editor. We've got a new document. Uh, one of the best tips I was taught while learning how to code in Python was to set up your code with a set of comments that sort of outline what you're trying to achieve and that way it sort of gives you a goal, a skeleton sort of to build towards and put the muscle on later. So for this little tutorial we're going to import Rhino import the grass hopper plugin so we can change our variables then we want to change those variables so we're going to do the taper we'll do the twist we'll move in x move in y and finally bake our object so that's sort of all the steps we need to achieve so that we match the um, max script example. So our first step is pretty straightforward. The comment is completely redundant, but just in case someone else looks at our code, we want to be professional. And that way they can sort of glean what we've done, read the comments and get a good picture of what we've done. Now we've imported Rhino and now we need to import our Grasshopper plugin. So that's simply Rhino, Rhino app. We give the plugin name as a string and that gives us access to our Grasshopper plugin document. So now the first thing we want to set up is the taper. So we've got this number slider here, with the variable. What we're going to use is we're going to use a for, uh, a for loop and we're going to use a range. So for i in range, start at one because our number slider is one to 10. So we're going to start at one we're going to go to 5 and it will default to step size 1. If we wanted something different we could set it to a negative number or something larger than 1. And we're going to change that slider, set slider value. And here when you've got the grasshopper set slider value this is where we need to access our GUID. So we're going to take our number slider we're going to take the output of that into the input of our Grasshopper GUID component. Right click on our panel, copy data only, take that into our Python editor, control V. And that's telling uh, Grasshopper which slider to change the variable. And here is where we input our variable and it's going to be I. So we're going to step through one, two, three, four. I'd actually increase that up to six because it's exclusive. Close that bracket. Now if we want to see if that works, we need to update our Rhino, our Grasshopper, sorry, plugin. At the moment, we're not running the solver. All it's doing is it will run through this code once the Python finishes running the for loop, whatever this window is at. It will finish so if I hit play now and then hit in the window we see that it changes to 5 we don't get the steps going through so for each step through the 
for loop. We can put in our grass for our grasshopper plugin, run the solver, and all we need to do is put in the name of our grasshopper document, which we know is tutorial as a string. Now, if we hit the play, we should see our taper number slider run. And there we go, it runs through one to five. And we see it update in the Rhino window as well. So that's our first step done. We don't need that anymore while we continue with our code. Next step is our twist. We'll grab the GUID of our twist number slider. Right click on the panel again, copy data only. Twist comes under, we want it for each, for each type taper, we want to run through each option of the twist. And for that, we, we're going to start at zero and run up to five. So that's exclusive, so five won't be included, it'll be zero to four. So for J in range five, we want to grasshopper set slider value. We've already copied our GUID of the slider and we want J to be our input. Now we'll run our solver again and just test our code to make sure it works. Tutorial .gh run that and now we can see them both for each step in our for loop it runs through all of this for loop which is exactly what we want. The next step is when we bake it out, we don't want it to bake all in the same position. Say we're sending this to a manufacturer or a 3D printer, we want to set it out in a way that makes sense. We don't want to do any more manual work than we have to. This could be a building with you know, tens of thousands of panels, so a few extra line, lines of code saves us who knows how much time in the end. We want to work smarter, not harder. So we're going to grab our X coordinate, grab that object's GUID, and for each of our loops, we're going to change this value also. Now we want our taper, we're going to use I, but that will only be 1 through to 5, so we're going to times that by 17, and then for our Y value, we'll grab our Y number slider, copy that ID, that will be the J times 17, so that's, we'll take our comments and just put them where they make sense. It becomes a bit easier to read now when we run this. There we go. So for each option of each variable we're testing, it is changing the position of our shape. So our last step we have is that we want to bake. So to bake, we Gonna again reference our grasshopper document bake data in 
object and all that requires is a ID and for that we're going to give it our capped surface and now when we run our Python we should see each option generated lovely now if we think back to our example in the book of the Mac, Mac script it started at no change in the bottom left and then it ran up the taper in the X and Y so we've got it in the backwards sort of running a bit backwards at the moment that's not really a cube either so if someone if someone gave that to me a student handed this in for this assignment I mean it would be a B or definitely wouldn't be an A because we're trying to reproduce what we see in the um, parametric design for our textbook so that's pretty easy to fix all we need to do is think about what we're doing so if we go back to zero and we know what we want that to be at zero so we want if we have one we're stepping up now we could go 10 and go minus but if we go minus in our range then we're timesing a minus number for our position which we don't want because then we'll be going backwards so this should be a pretty simple fix if we want one we want what we want is we want one zero on both sliders to be a cube so if we just put in a new number slider zero to ten oh no that's going to change our GUID we won't do that right click values change the minimum to zero and for our function our expression and change that and we're just going to add in a 1.0 minus our input divided by 10 and now 0 is the cube as we go up 1 goes in and stops which means we can go back to our Python I'll just save this document go back into our Python editor change this to 5 so we get 5 times 5 in both of our for loops hit the play button and now when we run our Python script you can see that we start with the perfect cube in the Y direction we increase our twist down the X direction the taper goes in and then XY we hit the maximum for both I really recommend that you guys have a play around with your for loops as well as different types of inputs that you can change push this to the limit I mean what what happens if we increase these and sort of see what sort of create creative results can come from just sort of playing with the inputs so that's half the fun of grasshopper so hopefully some of you guys found this tutorial helpful uh, if so please leave a like and a s subscribe 